The Whole Foodie Festival is on at Whole Foods Market through October 3rd. Save on hundreds of culinary favorites like delectable cheeses, crackers, charcuterie, olives, and chocolates for that perfectly elevated snack board. Class up the party even more with short ribs, caviar, and produce on sale. And save on a huge selection of wine, including those made with organically grown grapes, starting at $6.99. Check out the Whole Foodie Festival today. Terms apply. Must be 21+. plus. Please drink responsibly. One of the best things in Las Vegas is that we cater to all price points. You know, like low end, you got your taco trucks and your budget motels. But on the high end, you've got like luxury suites and prefix menus. But how much money can you blow on a meal in Las Vegas? Today on CityCast Las Vegas, I'm chatting with food influencer Phil Sang, a.k.a. Las Vegas Phil. And he tells us about the most expensive restaurants in Las Vegas and their extravagant, mind-boggling menus. It's Thursday, September 21st. I'm David Figler, and here's what Las Vegas is talking about. Philip Zhang, a.k.a. Las Vegas Phil. Welcome back to CityCast Las Vegas, man. Thank you. Great to be back. How are you? Uh, doing good, because I know when we have Las Vegas Phil on, we're going to be talking food. <laughs> so let's jump into it, man. Las Vegas Phil, what is the most expensive meal that you have ever eaten in Las Vegas? It would have to be Kame, uh, which is an omakase experience uh, on Spring Mountain at the Lotus Street Apartments. That meal starts at $500 per person. Um, I'm not including alcohol in this. Uh, if I were to include alcohol as well with food, um, usually the memory's quite hazy and it is now. <laughs> and I, it might I be... might have spent 10 grand. I don't know. <laughs> After that second bottle of tequila, whatever. Exactly. So that that's a hefty price tag. Was that a, a, a tasting menu or did you just kind of go nutty all over the board on the menu? So an omakase experience uh, basically means trust the chef and they Got just kind of bring out uh, the courses. You don't, I mean, Chef Eric will give you a menu in the beginning, kind of giving you a vague idea of what's to come. Um, doesn't really specify the presentations or anything like that. Um, but yeah, usually it's a, it's a set menu. I would say maybe it's around... Maybe 16 to 18 courses of just uh, small bites here and there as it goes kind of through the the couple of hours dinner. Yeah. I mean, that's a, a dent in the wallet. What did you get over those two hours? So usually it's a lot of just high-end ingredients. Uh, a lot of A5 Wagyu, foie gras, caviar, fattier cuts of fish like the Otoro from Japan, different preparations of like hairy crab. Uh, lots of lots of stuff like that. Yeah, and the the foods that you're mentioning there, I mean, I think they're all pretty much synonymous with the the high flying food lifestyle, right? I mean, caviar, of course, and foie gras. I mean, these are things that you you see on a menu, and you're like, uh, maybe someday, maybe someday I'll do that caviar flight, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that that just looks so intimidating. But they they throw it kind of all together for you. What what else about that experience might have made it? a standout uh, apart from the price. Oh, I mean, the setting, the omakase room setting that they have uh, in Kame is amazing. Just the staff and just the way the presentations of the the dishes are. It's really just one of the very few unique, you know, to Vegas' own experience. And there's been so many people who have been to Kame, lots of pro poker players, Dua Lipa was just there not too long ago, a few others. And and I, I hear from a lot of people that do DM me after they have their experience saying it is possibly the best omakase they've ever had in the world. In the world. Wow. Yeah. I mean, for a lot of folks in Las Vegas, you could go out for a nice celebratory dinner for a hundred bucks, right? Absolutely. And it, it's probably a nice meal. So... Uh, I guess what goes into elevating a meal into that upper stratosphere expensive at a high end restaurant? It has to do with the quality ingredients and the preparation. It isn't just, you know, your basic nigiri, although that's 
that's part of the meal as well. You know, if you go on my Instagram, I posted a Kame several times and the presentations are are pretty outstanding. So that's really what sets it apart. And and the quality grids. I know Chef Eric is quite the snob. You know, there's only two or three sushi suppliers in town, but he's he sent a lot of stuff back, uh, a lot of stuff he won't use. And and you can really just tell the difference, huge difference between your basic AYCE sushi and what he's doing. Do these chefs ever go, it's like if there's only a, a couple of sushi providers, do they ever do like these special orders from outside the normal networks? Yes. Yes. Uh, I mean, some of the best chefs have, have a guy who know a guy. <laughs> have a guy <laughs> who know a guy who... Yeah. Found a truck. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, sometimes you see, oh, everyone is magically serving squash blossoms today. I mean, what happened? <laughs> yeah. And what about the service on, on, on these kind of meals? I imagine in, in a lot of ways, uh, almost choreography, like old Hollywood style. I mean, is that is that unreasonable to think of it that way? Or is it just, a ten- I mean, tell me what it's like. What's the service like at a $400 meal? I mean, if you're there, it... it as a as a average customer, I think it seems very seamless and very like just kind of naturally happens. But yeah, there is a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. And if you really just focus on the service um, with any of the restaurants that charge that much, I mean, it's really just a, a great kind of beginning to end experience. The attention to detail uh, when you get up and, you know, they fold the napkins or whatever, or they just notice you know, if if one of the people at the party does use the restroom or makes a phone call that they kind of are able to halt uh, dinner so courses just don't build up at the at the seat. All right, Phil. So we talked about Kame. That's that's number one. That's your most expensive dining experience. But what? let's get the rest of that list out. You know, this is like expensive food porn right now. We're going to jump into it. What are the next three expensive dining experiences after Kame? Sure. So uh, first, we're going to start with Grand Cru by Partage. Partage is a modern French uh, restaurant located on Spring Mountain. And they recently stepped up their game last November where they opened up a private dining room, uh, kind of like a 5D dining experience with like a seven course dinner with wine pairings and caviar. And that goes for $400. And that's all in, including tax and tip. So... <laughs> It all, as absurd as it sounds, it almost feels like you're getting more of a value for your $400 there because of the wine as well. So that wine is included. So that's different than most of those that we, you know, think about yeah. as far as the add-on. Okay. And and Partage is over there in the Chinatown area. They're in that same strip mall with like Golden Tiki and a hundred other interesting things, right? That's right. And then they... Uh, leased out the place next door to them and, and expanded that whole thing. And so um, that's, a, that's a dinner experience that's only available right now on Fridays and Saturdays. I think the dining room fits maybe up to 20. Oh, so it's pretty intimate. I've been there a couple of times and we've hosted more of an intimate party where it's like a table for 10. And, and that's been a really fun experience. Okay. And at Partage for that, uh, Grand Crew four hundred dollar experience. What's a I don't know a standout dish or the most extravagant part of that meal? So the best part about Partage is that the menu changes monthly, so it's always a surprise. They always throw curveballs, and even on that day, I mean, if they get something that's great that has come in, they will change the courses accordingly. So for me, as a frequent diner at Partage, I, I feel like I just love. The surprises that that come every time. There's no exact same dinner I've ever had there. The Whole Foodie Festival is on at Whole Foods Market through October 3rd. Save on hundreds of culinary favorites like delectable cheeses, crackers, charcuterie, olives, and chocolates for that perfectly elevated snack board. Class up the party even more with short ribs, caviar, and produce on sale. And save on a huge selection of wine, including those made with organically grown grapes, starting at $6.99. Check out the Whole Foodie Festival today. Terms apply. Must be 21+. plus. Please drink responsibly. Okay, so after Partage, what's what's the next one? Next one would be Guy Savoie, which is located at Caesar's Palace. Um, longtime, super famous French chef. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there seems to be a running thing with French. Yeah, and, I was uh, saying French, French. It's super expensive. 
Well, butter ain't cheap, and they use a lot of butter. <laughs> yes, a lot of butter, uh, a lot of carbs. Uh, really just heaven for me. <laughs> and how much is the Guy Savoie experience? Guy Savoie is uh, $400 as well. They have a, they have a Forbes five-star menu. And it's kind of like uh, Guy Savoie's greatest hits, including like the black truffle soup and all that stuff. A lot of people don't like the dining room because it's very high ceiling, kind of cavernous, makes you feel like maybe you're in an artsy convention uh, hall. But I, I definitely dig the experience. And of course, the food was, was, was top notch. How much more can it go if you get the wine on top of that? Like you get a decent bottle of wine that pairs with that $400 meal. What kind of extra are we looking at there? If you do the premium wine pairing for that five-star menu, I believe it's an additional $300. So seven. Yeah. Seven Seven large. If you go, if you're going all out. Per person. Per person. Wow. Okay. So after Guy Savoie, are we, are we getting away from France? We aren't. <laughs> Uh, oh no! Yeah, <laughs> it's those French. Uh, so it's Joel Robuchon, uh, or as some people will say, Joel Robuchon. And um, to Oulat. me, I I would say that would probably be for me the best restaurant um, in all of Las Vegas. The menu degustation is at four hundred eighty five per person. It's around between sixteen to nineteen courses, and it's just a really well thought out. French culinary journey uh, to me. and uh, But they do have lower priced uh, menus as well, where you can get like one appetizer, two main courses, one dessert, or two appetizers, one main course, et cetera, et cetera. So I think you can get in there at maybe like 185 per person. I, I, oh, <laughs> bargain. I'm pretty man. sure you won't be full after. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's a way to go as well. Now I've I've never eaten at Rubichon, but I I hear about this like crazy butter experience. I mean, speaking of butter, uh, is do you know anything about what I'm talking about? That there's I do, some kind I of do. famous butter. What what is that? What is what? What can you do with butter? I believe it's literally drugs that the DEA should look into, and will probably make <laughs> illegal if they kind of sifted through that butter. But yeah. um, one of the most epic parts of the Joel Robichon experience is the bread cart. Uh, they kind of roll it out to the table and it features maybe, I don't know, 15 different types of bread uh, that you can choose from. And then with that bread uh, comes this uh, incredible butter display that they kind of scrape the French butter off of. Um, and you just use that with the, with the bread. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. Uh, the, it's, it's really the greatest butter ever. The breads are incredible as well. And a lot of people who complain that they'll never get full at, uh, at expensive dinners like this, I guess they could just load up on the bread if they wanted to. I choose to try to control myself, but the bread uh, and the variety is, is incredible. All right. Now, you know, I'm impressed. Trust me. I'm very impressed and I'm never going to say that. But I was also just at the Minnesota State Fair on a little mini vacation mm -hmm. and I saw uh, guys making butter sculptures that were the identical likeness of local beauty queens like Miss Minnetonka and it looked exactly like her. So, you That's know, I, I think that there might be some room for Rubichon to even step it up further is to bring out that amazing butter and put it in the likeness of LV Phil and David Figler. I, I think if they do that, I will go there with you. Do you think it's going to happen? Butter sculptures uh, could definitely be a possibility. I think there would be better candidates than us, but uh, I think it would be very, uh, it's a very cool idea. Come on, man. We're handsome fellas. Um, you know, we're, we're talking about all these sort of set uh, pre prefix uh, meals, um, but you could, you could do some serious damage bouncing around a la carte at some of these places too, right? I mean, you could run up a bill of more than a thousand dollars a person if you really went crazy. Absolutely. What, what are some of the most expensive single items in the last couple of years that you've, I don't know, seen on a menu, maybe tried off of a menu? Well, in general, steaks are, I mean, Las Vegas is really a capital of overpriced steaks, compared to anywhere. I mean, Carver Steak, uh, their Tomahawk, I think starts at like 285 now, where, you know, two years ago, I think the most expensive Tomahawk in the city was like 150. Um, so anything steakhouse related 
uh, usually is is where the money is. Uh, great examples are Bazaar Meats or Golden Steer, uh, Berries. I mean, those are great examples. Jean George are great examples of places that would who just you know, charge exorbitant amounts for steak, and 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 there's no shortage of people that want to get in there. I mean, they're routinely booked out, especially on the weekends. Um, but like certain like one item dishes, I mean. Yeah, it would probably have to do something with uh, lobster or steak. Yeah, and I mentioned like caviar flights because I've seen some of those that uh, even at uh, at Bizarre Meats, or I think there was a caviar mm-hmm. flight that just was eye popping expensive. Yeah, I was just at Bizarre maybe a couple weeks ago. I think it was some sort of like crazy Ocetra caviar presentation with uh, Krug or some some kind of champagne, and it was like six hundred bucks. And that's just to start dinner. <laughs> I don't know why I have to even preface it with, I've never tried it, but I remember uh, Fleur, which was a long time restaurant that recently closed, mm-hmm. used to advertise a $5,000 hamburger. Oh, yes. I mean, when does it just become gimmick? <laughs> you know, w- w- what what's the point of having something like that on a menu? I think it's just really more of a PR news piece than anything else to to get out the name of the restaurant nationally. And hopefully, you know, Joan and Bob from Milwaukee, Wisconsin stops by the restaurant just because they heard of it. Take a picture of the menu and send it to all the friends. Take a picture of the menu and and head over to Rubio's or wherever. (laughs) Oh, Salt Bay is the biggest. Oh, Oh, yeah. Right. I mean, you talk about the most expensive steak in Las Vegas. That's it. The, The tomahawk. That's covered in gold is what twenty seven hundred. What? Yeah, and then when he was here um, during that opening month, you know, pe- when people came there in droves and bought those twenty seven hundred dollar tomahawks instead of getting bottle service at the club, the steakhouse was the club because you know Salt Bay was the DJ and basically everyone's just kind of <sighs> going nuts as he's just cutting steaks. <laughs> Phil, last question. What do you think these expensive meals do for Vegas's reputation, good and bad, even if most people will never, ever order them? <laughs> well, you know, the, Ray, Vegas has always been um, a place where, which takes care of high-end clientele in the best ways possible. And I think any casino or any hotel resort that that wants to attract the sharks, attract the high-end business people. I mean, you got to have these kinds of restaurants. I mean, there's a reason why, you know, some of these sharks will never stay at the link, will never stay at on Fremont Street. Um, and it's because of a lot of these restaurants. So I think there's a lot of good in having it here. I mean, the the, the cuisine, the gourmet scene in Vegas is, is pretty outstanding right now. Uh, and, and the best part, is that a lot of these guys, after they do their stint three, four, or five years, they end up off the strip doing some amazing stuff. Um, well, that's always the hope, right? Yeah, that they, that's always they the get hope. rid of the 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 shackles of what they have to do and who they have to sort of uh, cater to in a lot of ways, and then just come out and do it for the people. But um, so I think that's all good stuff. I I really don't see any negatives to having. I mean, such high-priced, uh, high-end gourmet restaurants in town. Um, I mean, if you don't like it, you just don't go. I mean, that's the beauty of places like MGM. There's there's so many other reason, more reasonably priced spots to go to in there and around there. Um, but what? how about you? I mean, obviously, you do think there's a negative. I'm curious. What oh, you think. I, I mean, I, I think it's just this horrible tease or that, you know, a, a family – saves up to go do one of these things. And at the end of the day, uh, for whatever reason, they're just like, maybe we should have bought that mattress instead, you know? (laughs) But maybe they did have an amazing experience, one that's worthy of, you know, uh, passing down as legend from generation to generation about the time that they, you know, ate at Kome. Right, right. But I liken it to like Crystal Shopping Center. I mean, all those super high-end clothes are there. I mean... (laughs) It doesn't mean, I mean, it's like window shopping, I guess, in that way, yeah. Yeah, in a certain way. Well, LV Phil, uh, always fun talking food with you. Maybe you and I will uh, grab a relatively inexpensive $50 hamburger at Berry's together. That might be the way to go. Sounds good. (laughs) Thanks again for joining us on CityCast Las Vegas. Thanks for having me. Great talking to you. 
That's all for today here on Sitcast Las Vegas. If you enjoyed the show, here's what you can do. Hit the share button on this episode. And the first three people who pop up on your list, well, they have to treat you to dinner at one of the restaurants we talked about. Hey, we don't make the rules, so smash that share button. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Y'all take care.